Hi there, Doug from Tau Stats. As we continue our fall 2024 journey through the BitTensor network, let's do a deep dive on validators. I start all these videos at the highest level. Inside the BitTensor network, it's most easily divided into subnets. And today there are 52 subnets, but this is changing over time, so I put an X at the end here. And each subnet has a unique task, right? There's inference subnets, there's storage, there's compute, there's pre-training, there's all these different types of subnets that are out there. One analogy that we've used in the past is it's like a shopping mall where each subnet is a different store. They're all run by different people, but they're all in the same location. Here's a picture of a high street, same idea. Using that store analogy to say that subnet three is a violin shop, and then walking through the different personas of a subnet as if they were employees of a, of a shop on the high street. So inside each subnet, we've got the subnet owner, and then we have validators, and we have miners. Miners do the work, and then the validators check that work. Validators also act as the conduit in and out of the subnet. So if someone wants to ask the subnet a question, it goes through the validator to the miners and then back out again. In our store analogy, you might think of the miners as the people making the violins, and then the validators are the people running the front of the store. They decide how much each of the violins are worth, right? They're testing the work of the miners, but then they're also the front end of the store. So if someone comes in and says, hey, I wanna buy a violin, they help that person and then make sure that they leave with the violin. So in the back, we have these workers. They're following the subnet rules. They're creating these violins. The validators then take all of the violins that are being created and grade them from lowest to highest in terms of value. Which one of the miners is making the best violins, which one is doing an okay job, etc. One of the other roles of the validator is that they are the conduit to interact with the subnet. So if someone wants to ask the subnet a question or perform a task with the subnet, the entry point is through a validator. So that's sort of like someone coming into the store to buy a violin. They would talk to the the validator, the person at the front of the store who wouldn't find the right violin for them. In a real bit tensor example, all of the AI generated images in the videos that I've produced were created using subnet 19. And so using Corsell, I make a request to a validator for an image, a picture of a violin shop sign. It goes to Corsell into the validator, validator asks the miner, the miner does the work, validator grades it, and then it comes back to me. If we talk tokenomics, again, subnet owner 18%, miners and validators each get 41%. With validators, it doesn't all go to the validators, it gets split up between the validators and those that have delegated stake to the validators. Let's walk through that a little bit here. So here's a subnet. We can see several validators here. They all have a stake, the amount of tau that other owners of tau have delegated to these stakeholders. And then how well they're grading the miners is the V trust. And these combined help calculate the dividends. And dividends is a percentage. If you add up all the dividends for all of the validators on a subnet, it'll add up to one. That's divided by this. So all of the validators get their share of the emission. And then based on the take for each of the validators, this is how much the validators actually earn. The rest is distributed by the amount of stake that the different people have staked to the, to the validator. The, amount, the stake can also be divided up in different ways. There's a new concept called the, a, a parent hotkey, where the child hotkey is running the neuron in the subnet but a parent hotkey is a validator that isn't running their own infrastructure, but running their validator on top of another validator. We have a whole video on the tokenomics of that because it's a little too complicated for this video. But why would you do this? One approach has been that subnet owners don't always own a validator. And so they can't actually access the knowledge of their subnet. So on several subnets, some of the validators with a high amount of stake have helped subnet owners create their own validator by giving them um, parent take. So one thing that's very clear for validators to maximize their revenue is they need a lot of stake. They need to have tau holders in the community trust in those validators to give them stake. So how do validators do that? 
one thing that a lot of people who stake look at is how much are they going to earn in proceeds? And we show that at Tau Stats with the, the nom for 24 hours per thousand Tau staked. So if you had a thousand Tau staked at Tau Stats, when I took the screenshot, you make 0. 0.42 Tau a day. Now to maximize this nom value, the validators have to validate on every single sum. So they can pick up all of the potential tau that they can possibly earn, even down to the dust on the very small emitting subnets, it maximizes their return so that they get more stakeholders. One thing you may notice is that there's some down here with the nom that's red. And we're, we're going to talk about that next because the next section is how do validators get around from actually doing the work of the validator? And one of the most prominent ways is through weight copying. And so if we come here, we can see that these validators have been marked as weight copiers. So what's weight copying? We've got these validators, they're grading all of the violins. Well, any of you who were in high school, just like I was, know that there's always someone in the back of the math class copying everybody, somebody else's homework. They're not actually doing the work, they're just copying it and turning in the work and getting a good grade. That's what weight copiers are doing. They're going to the Metagraph. They're finding the incentive of all the miners after consensus has been made. So all the validators doing the work, grade all the miners, there's the consensus. This is about as perfect as a score could be. So the weight copiers just copy this. They end up with a very, very high V-trust because their scores exactly match that of the consensus. And if they exactly match the consensus, they're going to get a very high score. They don't actually have to grade any of the miners. They don't do any of the work on the, to the subnet. There are several approaches working to stop weight copying called commit reveal, which are being released onto the chain as we speak. The last role that validators play in the BitTensor network is they handle today the way emissions are distributed amongst all of the subnets. If you go to the subnet page at TauStats, you can see the different emission for all of the subnets. And that's determined today on the root subnet. That's gonna change when detail launches, but that's gonna mean we're all new videos anyway. So we'll just show you the way it is today. So on the root subnet, and this is on the homepage of TauStats, the validators place weights on all of the subnets. And then the Yuma consensus takes all of the weights that were placed by the, by the validators and come up with the overall emission percentage for the subnet. Again, this is going to change. It's going to be more decentralized with detail. There will still be this aspect, the root emissions, the root um, staking. But as you can see, validators play a pivotal role from the amount of emissions that all the subnets get to how the miners are graded and how people interact with subnets inside the BitTensor ecosystem. So the role of the validator is super important. If you found this video helpful, hit a like, subscribe, and of course, check out all the other videos. Um, come to taustats.io to see all of the graphs and charts in real time. Thanks for watching.